I'm being joined by a former, a former Nigerian lawyer, leader of the Afeni Ferry, a strong ally of the late nationalists and former premier of the Western Union, Chief Obafemi Awolo, a restructuring advocate, Chief Ayo Adebanjo. He joins me from his home country, Isan Yaobo, in Ogun State, Southwest Nigeria. Thank you so much, Pahade Banjo, for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure having you on this uh, 1st of May. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me begin the conversation tonight uh, by getting to understand what in the mind of Afeni Ferry is a government of national unity. Well, um, the circumstances of the country and the nice share of the government of Buari has warranted my calling for a national government. It appears, as is known already, that Buari's administration. Okay, so I, I wanted to understand to in details what Afeniferi means by government of national unity. Because. Oh, I, but, I wanted but, to know oh, but also, then um, where, what place does this have in the bodies of our laws or what inspiration does it have? Does it have any deep inspiration in any part of our constitution? My dear, when people begin to talk of what position it has, you have to talk of a, a set of emergency in the country, a set of emergency that warrant drastic measure is not necessarily contained in the Constitution. It is because of the inefficiency and incompetence of the government and the unwillingness of the government to take advice from the leaders of the country who know better that we are calling for a government of nationality by, t by which all shades of opinion must be represented in that government. This government has put that it has no clue to our problem. And every time we talk about change the government, change the constitution, there is no security, there is no, the, the economy is bad. The, the, the government, the Buhari government in particular, looked dumb. And Chavez doesn't understand the issue. And we have to understand a problem before we find a solution. And all wise men in the country, learned people, experienced people, who have been in the struggle before he came in, give him advice, he wouldn't listen. That is why we are calling for, if you continue like this, because until you change this constitution, it is the problem of the country, you won't get anywhere. And there's evidence that Buhari is not willing to because of my own view, he has a private agenda. But if you continue like this, this country will break. There's no doubt about that. So those of us who are anxious about keeping the country together in peace, are anxious that we should get people of nationalists, patriots, who don't want the country to break, to come together to form a government of national unity to solve the immediate problem. Take, for instance, we are talking of an election under this precarious insecurity problem. Every day kidnapping, every day killing, every day murdering. And yet, our government has no solution. It has got to extend. We are criminals are now telling us before we release some of your capital people, you must give us Tramadol, asking the brother government to commit an illegality. You must give us cigarettes. You must give us petrol. Our, go our government has become so, in so, in so incompetent that criminals are in a better position to detect terms. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know how you feel. Those of us who witness independence, who witnessed the country atmosphere before 1966, we feel sorry. It is only those of you who are born after 1966 who don't know what peaceful coexistence is, who don't know what federal constitution is. 
that can be that can be happy about the situation. Those of us who have invested in a country like this, in a country that is united, a person like me, I have invested in Nigerian unity. I wouldn't be happy for the country to break. But all the conditions that we made the country stay together, we have been setting it regularly for the past years. But why would we don't listen? Because he has an agenda. And when we talk about it, people say you don't like him. No. I told him some years ago that I hope it's not be too late for him to know that those of us who are clamoring for the structuring of the country are those who love him, those who don't want the country to break. We are talking about an election. Shehu, have we got the country now? Are you sure that you are going to the polling station? You have a bullet behind you? How are we sure that the polling officers, INEC, the officers, one of them, are being killed? Police station are being bombed. There is no evidence or solution to this. Every day kidnapping, every day murdering, every day no road is safe. And you see, the government has proved that even within the government, there is no cohesion. If I may quickly yeah, hop in to, um, I'd like to ask one of the recommendations that was made by Afeni Ferry was that. This government of national unity, because I'm still trying to, I mean, we're speaking to a lawyer of many, many, many years of experience. So we wanted you to explain to us how this will happen um, so as not to degenerate or cause anarchy. Because in essence, you're talking about the solutions to the Nigerian problem. But before you touch on that, you said you have given the government of the day solutions to the problem. You have advised the government on the solutions to the problem. In specific, what are some of the advice that you have given this government that you think has not been taken seriously? Well, about a year ago, when I addressed my meeting in my village, I said the question of changing this constitution is immediate and can be no problem. Ask all the nationalities in the country to make recommendations. And, and, and we go together and solve them. And it is simple. If you are not prepared to change, uh, to have a new constitution, take the 2014 constitution and let us go into it. And I say this, Cheon, it is only Buhari does not want this country to go together. It is only the Buhari doesn't want the solution. Why? 2014 was recommended by Jonathan. He said, we'll touch it. In 2018, El Rufai, one of the, one of the strong men in his government, a government of Kaduna, he set up a committee to recommend on restructuring. They recommended restructuring in 2018. That is their party. In other words, those who are for the Jonathan and his own government agree nothing doing. Now, again, at the, the railway um, tragedy, El Rufai specifically accused this government, their security, that they should have prevented that incident where mem members were killed, abducted, because they know where they are. The federal government has not reacted to it, that's a lie. And that we have been accusing this government again that he knows those who are behind Boko Haram and that and I even accuse him of being collusion to it. Why do I say so? The security people is set up, General uh, 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 the, for, the former Air Force man, um, he, he came to the air and he said, he has given the list of those who are behind Boko Haram to General Buhari. No action. The, 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 the Attorney General of the Federation, Malami, also said they have 200 names of those who are backing Boko Haram. These are the people causing us trouble. That's about a year now. No action. What does that mean? That you know those who are troubling us? You keep quiet? Nothing doing. And all the areas where the uh, Fulani has men 
of Southern Kaduna in, uh, in Makodi and all that. They have not recovered them. The governor of the Niger says, say, well, about so, so many local governments have been captured by this area and as you come and help him. Those areas have not been recovered up till now. More have been dangerous. The same thing the governor of Bono. Then where are we? Then you are talking of election. Are you saying, is it when everybody is in the grave that we are going to have an election? Yeah, if, if, I, if I may come in again, uh, yeah, that, Manjo, uh, <laughs> the question here is, uh, would it be fair to say that the government is not doing enough uh, considering the state of insecurity in the country, especially in the northeast region of the country, before President Buhari and the APC government took over power in 2015, and what is happening right now, if you assess it critically and fairly? My dear, <laughs> except you are going to play up to the government. Are you going to say that's an improvement? This is worse. Well, Jonathan was there in 2015. The thing is located on the northeast. Why are you trying to live in denial? Do you have, a, do you, do you have to, to do any special inquiry before you know that? Samfara, Kaduna, and all, all the parts of the northwest, they are not as bad as this as Jonathan was there. It comes to a stage where even the governor of Kasina the governor of the state of the president, who is a major general, asked for, 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 for mercenaries to come and help them, asked for negotiation with bandits. Have we got a government that can present that? When even his own local, his own, his own state is not safe. And all, many of the other government, uh, the state government, are clamoring for. For help, is it not a shame for us? This is a shame. You spoke well, we about uh, this issue is of restructuring, and th this is not the first yes. time. I mean, as long as I can remember, the matter of restructuring has been on the front burner for many, many years. Now, at the point exactly. where we are at right now, you spoke about 2014 Comfort Report, which you said is a fantastic idea that can be developed and worked on. But the government of the APC had said, look. Uh, Restructuring means different things to different people. If you were to advise the government today, considering the present problems that we're facing in this country, what exactly should be done immediately on the issue of restructuring? Because uh, also the government will tell you that they've taken this restructuring in piecemeal. They've tried to approach the issue of uh, security. They tried to approach the issue of local government autonomy, judiciary, uh, autonomy of the judiciary. They've tried to approach it in the manner in which the law permits. But from your own standpoint, how do you think can this best be approached right now? A practical approach, that is. Sheo, I wouldn't like you press me, both in the print and the uh, and electronics to buy the propaganda and the unintelligent propaganda of the federal government. Say the structuring means different people to different people to different people. What is structuring? All that says the structure is going to back to federalism. Federalism has no special decision. After Babala said it, everybody said it, everybody knows what is federalism. It is when we are trying to play up to the gallery, thinking that they are wise, when they are very illiterate. Unfortunately, they have lawyers there. And we have a person, a, a first class lawyer, a professor, as the, as the vice president, saying they don't know what is social, they don't know what is federalism, they don't know what is devolution of power. And they try to insult us. When they say, well, we don't want, we don't understand such story, but they believe in state police, they believe in devolution of uh, local government, they believe in this. What is such story? This is the soft total. This is what we say we should change this constitution. By the time we structure, all these things we are saying that they are doing by piecemeal. Will be there. Now, I mean, because and you I mentioned be, that and, the, and show, uh, the and government show, of national show, unity show, will show, be the white, just, uh, a new democratic government. What? So I'm asking for a legal process. How? Practical ways of how this can happen. My dear, if the, if the president is, a, is patriotic enough, 
All we are saying is that let him set up a committee to reconcile 2014 and verify uh, recommendation. Within three months, we go and get what we are. Try to pretend that you don't know what we want. What is it? Senator Adeye, in the second last republic, one of their senators, he said in the Senate, the problem of this country now is this constitution. It is not a question of amendment. It did a surgical operation. What are you amending? Who is amending what? There are case, you put it aside. We say we don't make this constitution. They have not refuted that. Every learned people, every person says this is a fraudulent constitution. Fraudulent. Who made it? They say we the people of Federal Republic. Did you make it? I'm saying let's make it. The constitution is not federal. Is that how we run the federal government? And you are talking as if we have all got the show, show you guys, have a babalolas, uh, one of the people in the country. Who knows the law? And we have an elite government now telling us what it to be. A great insult. My dear, not anybody telling us they don't know what to do is just a pretense. That is why we say, well, if you don't know what to do. Another issue Afeni Ferry discussed and came out with a position on is how to tackle security in the region. Now, you made example of how Amotekun works in the southwest region yes. of the country. And you said that the government should look at that model. But if the government were to adopt that model, although I'm not sure how that works within the frame of our federal constitution as it presently uh, is captured right, right now, what, what would you my say, dear, or dear. how would you say that a government can go about it if it's working in, uh, in, the, in the southwest? Particularly, my how can dear, that work to tackle the banditry uh, and the menace that we're seeing in the northwest? My dear, don't, I don't like you to continue to repeat this rigmarole of the federal government. We are saying they are doing this, they are doing that. The Amotekun, they have to go, how can they have Amotekun when they say they cannot carry arms? That's why we say it's unwilling to, do, to solve the problem. The talk of state police, and up to late then now, uh, the, uh, OBJ, from, uh, the former president, tell them, if you say give them state police, it's a solution to the question of security. Let each state take care of its own security. Let them be armed to take care of their security. How can you take care of security of Obo here from Abuja? When, 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 when do the terrain? How can you send somebody from Mina to Maya to go and take their security there? Do you know the, the, the terrain? This is a common sense of this, but my view is that it is not that Buhari doesn't know. But he has a private agenda which the press and everybody, you don't want to admit. It, 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 that's it, a very heavy allegation you have laid, Chief Adeban. Yes, I mean it. I've said it before. All citizens of the country. It's a that serious a allegation. Agenda. Do you have any evidence? Yes. I mean, that's, yes, yes, that? yes. You listen, I tell you, I have evidence. When I say he has a private agenda, we give him all these exercises. When has he come out to the air and tell us, oh, who is sending me a private agenda? I mean, well, why should I not give you a state police? I'm all right with this. I talk to the nation. Since I've been in office, has he ever said the main day? That's the president of the country. When he wants to talk to us, he goes abroad. When he wants to talk to us, he sends uh, Addition on Garba Shehu, who knows next to nothing, they are, they, they, they are just paid off to the gallery. We are past that. Those of us who know how this country came into existence cannot tolerate all this, uh, all this rigmarole. They are all paid to the government to say, well, even you pressmen, when you went to criticize, you pretend as if you don't know. Yeah, you say, but the government is different. What is it doing for where? How, 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 what's the value of my Naira in 2015? How, what's the value now? How much I will buy petrol in 2015? How much is it now? And you see, this is all so much. 
Uh, the vice president, who is the vice president, now said that I want to I want to succeed him and continue his work and continue the insecurity, continue the poverty, continue the the the, 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 the malfunctioning of our of our roads. Roads are not fair. Air is not fair. Sea is not fair. Even your house, you are not free. You cannot travel now from here to Ibadan without thinking whether we are buying safe. And you say, well, can you go from, from Abuja to Ekiti and be sure that you come back without security people around you? Is that how we live in a country? And the, and the, the president has not come to us to show us all this thing will come down. All the time we are talking about seriousness of the security. What evidence have you seen that the thing is, is reducing the volume? We, it's yeah, not let, increasing. Let's anchor on this note, uh, sir. Uh, well, and it's on, the, on the issue that you raised at the Greater Nigeria Conference about 2023, although I know your position and that of a fair ferry is that something drastic must be done before we go into that election. That's the position exactly. you have held. But you have also held a position about the issue of zoning, which has caught, uh, caused a lot of stare and controversy. I mean, what is your defense or what is um, the reasons why you held or you hold the view that a certain region of the country has more right uh, to become Nigeria's president than any other region of the country. May she, she, this one of the things I say, all of you are living in denial. You say you are one country. And those of us who made the constitution, in order to get everybody inclusive, those who thought they cannot catch up with the rest of the country if they have independence, particularly the North. I am a living witness saying this thing I've been doing before you were born and those who are talking now. It is because of this inclusiveness we put federal character in the Constitution. We, 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 we the British government are brocated under the new Constitution now. And it was because the, 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 the Northern region at that time, led by Saudana, feared that they cannot cope with the rest of the country. They said they are not ready for independence. That is why we had our independent in installment. The East and the West had their independent in seven. We have to wait for the Northern region to get their own 1959 before we could get our independent in 1960. All these are on record. And in order to show that the way we won't cheat you, we make sure that however, the way we distribute government functionary and all that, you will be included. And we make sure that every region is not cheated. That was what led to zoning. That was why when they knew that Abiola won the election and there was trouble in the country, they want to persuade the, the, the Western region, the, the Yoruba people, by bringing a uh, person join. Although we rejected him because the ministers don't right to give us who to represent us. That was why I voted, for, I voted against him. So in an attempt to pacify us, they, they bring in Shoneko, thinking that the moment you that was saying, no, we must choose our leader. Then when there was going to be an election now in 1999, they said, to, because in order to pacify the West, all the political parties chose their candidate from the Southwest. It's a record. Then Obasanjo Joe had eight years. When he left, then, he went to the North. Boy, Yadua came in. Unfortunately, he couldn't complete his thing. Um, Jonathan had to complete. And after he died, Jonathan came in from the south. Then he returned to the north again. Now, uh, Jonathan did this five years. Buhari had done eight years. He's come back to the south. If he come back to the south, is it fair? Is it inclusive? Does it make for unity for those who have had the share of being president in the South? Should have it again? After our brother Joe has done eight years, or Shiba Joe has done this vice president eight years, Jonathan has done five years. The South is not in the, in, the, in the country. It's not part of Nigeria. And you want peace? It's a question of principle. It's a question of morality. It's a question of being inclusive in everything we do. 
If you want peace, you must have equity. Is it equitable? We, we, we unfortunately need and to. And when the people now say they want to go, to say no. Time, sir. Um, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, the national leader of a socio uh, political group, Afeniferi, thank you so much for talking to us tonight.